Okay, so to wrap up this um, this three-part tutorial on uh, conforming in Nuke Studio, we just want to take a look at the backbone of this, which is the powerful export structure. This essentially allows us to define what we want to export, what format, and where we want to save it. Um, where we choose to create the comp option, uh, we're actually telling Nuke Studio to create a script into a predefined location. When we choose Render Comp, for example, we're telling Nuke Studio to output a video or an image sequence in a specific file format and to a specific destination on the hard drive. Now, up to now, we've been using the default settings, but these are, and hopefully you'll be able to see this shortly, these are entirely configurable. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, choose a, click, a clip on my timeline, and I'm going to come to File, Export, and that's going to bring up the export dialog which I'm going to try and size into this uh, into this window the export dialog is quite a substantial uh, panel and so because of that it becomes quite uh, quite tricky to work with anyway you can see we've got two options here we've got process sequence process shots okay sequence is obvious it's what we used to take out the entire sequence we'll do that at the end but I want to focus on shots for now so that we can actually look at the capability of this you can see that I've got this uh, this this version of this blue screen, uh, green screen element selected. So when I process a shots, then I'm I'm defining the way what is going to be exported, and then in this box here, I'm 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 basically being asked to define a preset really, which um which uh, which will undertake that uh, that transcoding process. Now you can see there's a couple of options. Here. There's the basic uh, nuke shot, or there's a nuke shot that actually gives some some additional functionality for annotations, creates a separate annotation file, and then we can also use this transcode option to transcode to DPS. We'll come back to that. Okay. So if we come down to this panel here, the path panel and the adjacent content panel, really what we're seeing here is the same as what we saw in the project panel uh, when we actually twirled down the visual effects. And we saw that there was a, a new script and there was a DPX format. So what we'd essentially got was a new project file, an NK file, and then we've got this DPX format. So this is essentially what is being spat out when we have this defined as a basic new shot. So I'm going to start by looking at this which is the uh, which this is basically the uh, the renders so when we look at the renders then at the moment and this is by default what we have here is this right node set to the DPX so if I bring for example if I bring my uh, my root folder over and we go into the comps and we come into this we can see that new that it's that uh, new studio has already created us um, a shot for this. In, our, in this case, it was shot two of the, uh, of the of the sequence, and we can come into here. It's created as a new folder, and it's created as this subfolder set, the script. So that's where we've got our two versions of the script. Uh, renders. This is where we've got our DPX sequences for both of those renders. Okay, and then the annotations. We do have an annotation file, but as yet populated minimal population. Okay. So this is essentially what the uh, what what Nuke Studio has generated for us, okay? But of course we can configure that. So for example, we can tell it rather than doing a DPX format, we can tell it to hold, do a whole bunch of things uh, like audio exports or, or annotation files. But the interesting one is the is the transcode images, because once we pick this, we can see that this opens up this uh, this this area down here where we can say, well, actually, we don't want a DPX, we want an EXR format, or we want a JPEG sequence, or we just want a QuickTime MOV file. Uh, so this brings up these options. And of course, when we pick these options, so let's say a MOV, then we've now got options for the codec. You can see we've got a bunch of codecs down here. Uh, I I don't use Macs, so I would rarely use ProRes formats. Uh, I would probably come down to something, depending on what I was doing. If I was just rendering out a, a reference file, for example, I'd be using something fairly compressed like this, but I could obviously use an uncompressed format. So the photo JPEG, for example, if I pick that, there are no audio files in here, so I'll probably turn that off. Um, and as we come down further on, we can see that we can get at the color space and change that. We can set the format. So in this particular case, we've up-res, so I'm going to choose to format, and I'm going to change that to HD. And we go further down, 
we can do additional things. Uh, we've got a JPEG, I think we've got a JPEG sequence here. Yeah, so we've got a JPEG sequence, so we won't have access to the alpha channel. Uh, but if we were using a format that did have access to the alpha channel, we could get it there. So essentially, what we've got here is is, is basically a way of setting up our the 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 the, uh, the transcribing within the format itself. So typically, at this part of the workflow, the digital intermediate staff would transcode the shots and distribute them to the various departments. Um, in the in the format that was required by that defa department, and we can see how easy this could be done within the uh, within the studio, um, and we could see how within a within a, a facility how these could be delivered automatically to different folders within this network media server, and they'd be immediately ready for use. So we can see how this translates practically. So let's just jump up to the new project file now. So we've looked at the renders and we're now looking at the script itself. And you can see here that again we have the option to transcribe out as images or, or, or various other things. But the one that I wanted to do is just leave it in its default state and take a look down here. Because this is quite revealing in terms of the way that the scripts are created when we actually sort of create a comp from a a, a clip on the sequence because essentially what's happening we looked at the script in the in one of the earlier um, parts of this tutorial where we identified that within the script a bunch of um, that the the script is pre-populated with some nodes on the read side and on the right side so what this is essentially doing on the read side is it's bringing in it's bringing in and it's using these these bracketed are essentially where it's taking the information from the it's taking the the information as metadata from the file name so in this case it's shot two uh, so it's just take, taking that it's taking the version so in this case I think that's version two um, it's appending it by the uh, by by the numbers because it's a sequence etc so this is how it generates the uh, the time code information this is how it establishes what shot it's using which version it's using etc so this is what it populates into the um, into the read node and similarly on the right node side again it's taking its shot number and this is what it used to to actually set up the uh, all the parameters inside the right node this is annotations which tell which basically says what what elements it's actually going to add in as annotations but we won't we really dwell on that so this is essentially how the read node uh, read node and write node information gets into those uh, into those nodes uh, when we open up the script for the first time okay if we just come down a little bit further we've got the tracks and handles tab and this, what this does on this side, for example, we can, if this is set to all tracks, for example, it will render everything. If it's just set to the VFX, it will just render the VFX shot. And as we've just got a VFX shot selected, then this is the only thing. But we could set this to all tracks and it would render everything from it. Or we can obviously specify other, other, other things. But because we're just working on a clip in this particular case, then it's just giving us that one option, which is that. Um, we can also define the uh, use the handles to define the the uh, specific areas of the of the clip. So, say for example, we were working on a shot that was quite a long shot, but we were just working iteratively on a very small area of that shot to do a specific effect. Then, what we could do is we we could use the um, we could use the, the the cut length. We could use the source the source start frame, and we could say about how many frames, and we could just cut off that area so that we were just rendering the area of the uh, of the comp that was relevant for us to be able to check just the area so that's uh, that's again that's another useful feature okay so if we wanted to render a whole sequence uh, then we would obviously be working inside the sequence itself now I'm just actually going to come out of this um, and actually select the whole sequence so I'm just going to click in the timeline and control A so that all of the clips are set and then come back to my export so if I was processing as a sequence then again the sequence would be selected instead of the shots and this time I would be choosing a, a preset for the entire sequence again I wouldn't really be looking to use a ProRes sequence because I don't use Max so I'd be using something like a photo JPEG just to point out that there are some tools over here which I'm not going to go into but these allow you to create presets of your own okay so the next thing is you've got this little option here to define where you export to so if you click on this for example you can go into your folder and you can find a relative 
a relevant folder in this case I've got one already set up called exports I can click on that and now that gets append, appended into the export path okay so we can see it we can see it there in the export path okay so we've got this uh, we've got this this mov file set up with the photo jpeg uh, codec established but of course we can come into this we can choose transcode and now we can get at that information inside here and make changes to it so say for example we wanted to revert to say a, P a png sequence or we wanted to go to um, an mpeg4 video for example or we wanted it to be uncompressed altogether then um, then we could do all that inside inside of this environment we can turn off the audio uh, because obviously this file doesn't require that uh, we can go back if we decide if we wanted to overwrite this we could go back and we, we could pick a different format at this stage okay uh, again we've got access to the color space we can our format so we can go to HD um, and there's a whole bunch of additional things in the in the advanced settings which I won't go into okay so once we've got that set up we can just hit the export and we get our export queue and we'll start to see that populating I'm actually going to pause the screen capture and then come back when it's finished okay so we can see the renders now complete if I bring across my file structure you can see that it's actually taken the name of the sequence um, and inside here we have our video so again I'll just um, I'll just scale this so that we're actually within our within our area So this is a bit of a beast of a of a project. The everything that I've done inside here has been pretty arbitrary, but it does give you an idea of the scope and the capacity of this uh, of this program. So there's our there's our render. It's actually I'm actually not working with great resolution footage, and uh, and this has compressed it further. So the actual image quality isn't that good. But uh, but obviously I could have chosen uncompressed format, and I could obviously be working on much higher resolution images. Okay, so and there's the render complete, which I can now clear those out and shut that down. So I think that's about it. I think it's reassuring to know that Nuke creates such a robust file and folder management structure, and for the most part, we can probably leave it to do that work for us. I think what makes this really powerful is our ability to be able to delve into the export settings and make adjustments to suit the specific nuances of an individual project. Anyway, this tutorial set as been a way of introducing you to the uh, to the Nuke Studio, and now it integrates with uh, with the Nuke scripting system. And I hope you found it very useful.